what's the story behind how you guys got the Hyro symbol on? This is one of my favorite pair of shoes. You know, I didn't. I, I think I didn't became the first Hyro sneaker fan. I said I'm gonna wear <laughs> these for like three years because I wore <laughs> everybody else's shoes and they wasn't black on. Yeah. So my homeboys got some shoes. I need to wear them. Plus, it's on my favorite. You know what I'm saying? Style. How did you guys get this? What, what's the story behind this right here? Man, well, we got a shout out Casual, who's who's a, a strong business mind and really is a great researcher. So he was like, man, we want to make something in the sort of Air Max platform because that was one of our favorite shoes. You know, coming up when we was little, man, these was like, these and Jordans, if you had them, you was king of the school that day, you know, because they, they were a high ticket item and rare, you know. So he went and found the factory that makes the Nikes and said, look, we want to make our own shoes. And they said, cool. You know, this man, China makes everything, you know. So we just went and found the factory and, and got them done. And you know, there's a lot of back and forth and development. There's a lot of different versions of that. But we, we, we settled on that because, hey, it's Raiders colors, it's Warriors colors, it's even A's colors. You know, it goes with all three of the, of the teams out here. And so we wanted to represent Oakland, but also represent ourselves. That's what's up. That's what's up. So let's get back into the architecture, man. I know that you recently bought a hotel. Oh, yeah. In Panama. Yeah, yeah. What made you take your money to Panama? What made you pick Panama as a country? What made you leave the United States? And you know, what made you get into the hotel business? Ooh, well, I was thinking about getting out of here. You know, um, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I love my people, and I love the fact that I grew up in Oakland and all the things that I've learned and all that kind of stuff. But I also know. A lot of that stuff is going on here. It just really ain't for us. And, I, and I'm, you know, getting about at the halfway point probably in my life. Am I going to spend the rest of my life struggling on this treadmill trying to get paper and also struggling against police brutality, you know, housing discrimination, voter discrimination, our own people knocking our faces off, you know, all these different things. Or I'm going to go somewhere where it's more peaceful and I can get off, off the beaten path. And so um, Really, I just meditated on it, man. And I'm gonna keep it 100, man. I don't really be talking about this, but my, my pops came to me in a dream. He did, and was like, man, you should go to Panama, right? And I, it was too, it was real, you know? So I was like, you know what? Let's go to Panama. I went on a little vacation. And when I went out there, I stayed at a hotel that I saw that was uh, for sale and bumped into the owner. He was there just chilling, drinking a brew. And he was like, man, I'll sell you the hotel. And so, you know, fast forward a year later, I got the hotel two years later. Now it's been running, you know, we four and a half stars on TripAdvisor and Travel Velocity and all that. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's beautiful, man. It's 19 rooms. We got horses. We got a beach. We got um, the best restaurant in, in the area. You What's know, city? It's, uh, the city I'm in is called La Gartero, but it's next to a city called Santa Catalina. And it's about six hours from Panama City. Panama only has four million people and half of them live in Panama City. So most of Panama is empty and just cool, small towns. Everybody's chilling. They got the happiest people four years in a row. They're, uh, they got, um, they're on the US dollar. So it's not like I got to exchange, but stuff is just a lot less expensive. And it's like island living, but it's not an island. It's an isthmus and you know, they got the canal and everything comes through the canal. I'm pretty sure these shoes came through the canal, you know? So if I need a flat screen, it's not like it's, it's got, it's the, I don't like the first and third world concept, but it's like third world living, but you can get all the first world comforts. Like Panama City got Jamba Juice and Hard Rock Cafe, Pinkberry, all that stuff, you know? So it's, I can still get all the modern comforts in the, in the, in the, without, without it being a really expensive because everything has to come through there. So, um, man, it's safe out there, man. It's all about surfing. I surf, so I really love surfing, uh, scuba diving, yoga. Art. So right now I'm trying to my next. So you on the Caribbean side? I'm on the Pacific side. So okay. Caribbean side is is predominantly uh, you know black people and all, and all that. But Panama, man, the whole Latin America. I don't know where this myth came. We got we got to Latin America before we got here. Right. You know. So I mean, we got everywhere before we got here. Really, on our own, thousands of years ago, and then not on our own a little bit later. But um, so when you hop off the plane, I, you know, I'm, uh, they they speaking to me. Brother, what's up? You know, it's not, and they're not like, hey, American brother. They speak to me in Spanish because they assume if I'm there, I'm Panamanian. All right. You know, so um, a lot of black folks there, uh, and throughout the Caribbean, throughout throughout the South America and Latin America, and um, what was so I'm on the Pacific side, uh, which is crazy because I'm the way I'm on a little outcropping to where I get the sunrise on the Pacific, and that's you know like. 
who's seen that Priceless. before, right? You know, yeah. I, uh, on my beach, I get the sunrise, but um, yeah, it's all it's a so fishing you're straight channel. on the beach. Yeah, I'm on the beach. Yeah, yeah, I'm on the beach. And you and, said it was horses and all. Yeah, that. I got horses, man. We got you know, and then we could take you to probably five or six really nice beaches around there. Good surfing beaches. What's the climate? Food. Is it California it's about 70, climate? It's seventy-eight to eighty-five degrees year round. But it rains when it's when it's when uh, during the wet so they're dry season and wet season. Would wet you, season it rains, but it's still eighty degrees outside. So you would you compare concert. it to Florida or would you compare it paired to Cali? I would say Florida, um, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it's tropical. It's you know tropical what I'm saying though. Like okay. it, I'm okay. in the jungle kind of. You know, so you know uh, it's tropical, but even when it's raining, it's hot. So tell me a little bit about your plans. I know we talked uh, 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 about a year back and you was telling me about some of the plans that you have for the city and for the area in particular that you were um, developing and that you were gonna develop different businesses in the area. Yeah, well, um, you know, there's young people out there. I talked to the young people out there. They were like, we want a gym. I was like, damn. So I'm thinking about putting like a little CrossFit out there or something like that. Um, in the city that I'm in, which is when we say city, it's 450 people. So, you know, that's, wow. small, that's smaller than a school, right? Um, so it's Brookfield. Yeah, exactly. You <laughs> feel what I'm saying, though? Uh, but it's spread out, and it's, yeah. people have their little spaces, but they're developing. But you got to go to the closest city, which is an hour and a half away, yeah. to get tools. So I'm thinking about doing a hardware store. Um, and then uh, I want to, you know, we, we're working on a recycling program out there because a lot of the tourists come and just toss stuff. And um, I'm trying to build a recording studio, an art studio, and a... Um, ceramic studio so that when people come to my hotel they leave with a souvenir but the souvenir is something they created out of local materials or maybe out of their mind and I want people to, you know recording artists creatives to come and and do their thing but in a, in a setting and environment that's not killing their pockets you know I mean our room started like twenty dollars and go to maybe seventy max and then um, also you know you can you can see this scenery and do all this and while you're inspired and writing you can not put something down you know so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it so the vacation isn't just about doing the Vegas thing and just getting loaded and, and partying. I mean, they got that too, but really about being creative, getting in tune with your own spirit, and, and coming back with something that's that's gonna better the world even more, you know? So something like a residency. Yeah, I'm, I wanna do an artist in residency uh, program, but also wanna make it so like, look, you, you and your crew, why don't y'all come out here? You know, it's gonna cost you less than staying in downtown Oakland. You're gonna have, you know, my, my, my chef is from Rome, a young brother named Mateo, uh, and he uh, he's from a Michelin star restaurant. So we've got fresh fish, fresh fruit, vegan all the way to, you know, steak, all the, all the meals and all that. So you're gonna be able to eat well for cheap and just record. If you bring your whole band, they can stay there. You can bring your family, whatever. It's activities for everybody. And you come home refreshed and got a record done or whatever. Done. So that's kind of, I'm trying to change the paradigm of vacation. And, to where it becomes a, a, a creative endeavor, not just um, a, a, a disconnect endeavor. So I want people to disconnect too, if that's what you're into. But for those of us who, you know, like I'm always rapping or always thinking of something, I want you to be able to have the tools there to make it happen without having to take notes and then have to go back to Babylon in order to get your notes out of your head.